Hi, I'm Kenneth Lund. I'd like to talk to you about machine quilting. With some of the components that I've developed, you can build and use your frame very economically and do incredible artisan quality quilting work. Let me show you uh, the frame that I've developed and explain its different parts, uh, explain the parts that I can provide for you and then the parts that uh, are better for you to acquire from your local home center store. Now I want to show you the carriages that I can provide or that you can build yourself with the pl uh, if you buy the plan set instead of the components. The most important I believe to the quilt frame is the carriage setup. Now, you have a top carriage and you have a bottom carriage. These carriages need to work together smoothly to go up to travel on the track uh, horizontally across the quilt width and to go back and forth um, you know through the machine's depth. Now, I want to show you my carriages. When I build a set of carriages I, I build it so that there's there's a fairly tight clearance between the top and bottom carriage and that they move very smoothly and freely. Now, I want to explain something though. Sometimes people get worried or hung up that uh, their carriage doesn't just fly from one end of the track, fly down the other. Uh, occasionally if you get your tracks too close together you can get a little bit of binding. Now, there's a few secrets. Okay, one, you want you want it so that the car the lower carriage moves smoothly on the track, so not too tight. Now, if it's a tiny bit loose, that's okay. And here's the reason why. The tracks are parallel this way, and so if there's a little bit of play on the bottom carriage between the tracks, it's not a problem because that that's the direction of movement of the top carriage as you can see here so what's important is that it just moves smoothly how fast does the carriages actually have to go it's real simple you're going to have your machine while you're quilting that is going the needle is going to be traveling through the top layer the quilt batting and the backing layer of the quilt that that then the speed of your machine is as fast as these carriages will ever move that's as fast as they can move okay, so I want to show you the carriages that I provide or that you can build yourself if you purchase a plan set they're really quite simple but you want them to operate smoothly and efficiently and now there's a lower carriage and a top carriage the top carriage moves on the bottom carriage the bottom carriage moves along the tracks now as you can see really moves quite smoothly and freely now I'm going to tell you something about the carriages that I when I provide the components I look all over the place to try and get wheels for carriages that I'm happy with on this setup I, I have some uh, skate type of wheels that I really like. These are my one of my greatest preferences. They're kind of a large diameter, kind of a heavy rubberized wheel, but here's why I like them. Instead of a single ball bearing wheel that runs up and down the tracks, these wheels have two sets of bearings, inside bearing, outside bearing. They're super heavy duty. I use diff lots of different machines, but if I one of the machines that I like is a Juki TL98E. It's a uh, bigger machine. It's uh, heavier than the some of the smaller machines. You know what? When I put it on this carriage, it's plenty heavy duty, and it still works really smoothly and nicely. Now, one moment. Another type of wheel that I'm able to get at times and use is kind of a metal a metal type of wheel again uh, a nice wheel a large diameter it has uh, ball bearing sets inside it it makes also a nice carriage so uh, if you buy my components uh, you're going to get a wheel on it that I would use myself uh, I don't use a single bearing type of rollers and wheels they just don't uh, do what I want them to do 
cards. But this is what I prefer and I've found after two years of building frames and testing frames really works well. Now, let's talk about the tracks. The tracks are something that you will build and put together yourself for your own frame setups. The reason is is that the tracks are best if they're in a long continuous length without splices. They just it's just smoother that way. There's no little uh, uh, you know splices or gaps to create any kind of a bump or you know take away from the smoothness of the operation. So how do you make the tracks? Really easy and really inexpensively. Let me show you. I start with. A piece of an MDF type of molding. This is about three quarter by inch and a half. It comes pre primed white from my home center store. I believe a six footer is costing me a little over two dollars. Not bad. Now, along with that, let me show you one. You'll need an edge, uh, you'll need a, a piece of wood that goes on the edge. This isn't the exact piece I would use, but it will show you for demonstration. You have a piece that goes on the, the edge of the track, it's screwed on, uh, and this provides the, the barrier for the, you know, to keep the wheel on the track and rolls along, just like what I've been showing you here. Now, here's the neat thing about the frames that you build yourself. A lot of people are space limited. I'm space limited. However, um, we're working on some huge quilts. We're working right now on a, a king size quilt of artisan quality that will be quite a project. Not a problem. The tracks and the rolls that you make yourself uh, are so inexpensive. It costs around $20 uh, for all of the track pieces and a set of poles for a 10 foot wide frame. How cool is that? And we'll get into more of the details on the, ro on the poles and the tracks later. But where I'm going with this is that since it's so inexpensive, um, myself and many others prefer to have different sets of tracks and, and uh, poles for, for different projects. A 60 inch, uh, 5 foot wide setup is really great for starting out and super inexpensive and then you can add to that or you, can, you can have even a separate 10 foot length um, again about 20 bucks worth of materials is what it'll cost you to make a 10 foot wide machine quilling four roll setup pretty neat huh now another major component of a machine quilt frame is you have end frames that hold the rolls. Now, um, you want this is important because those rolls have to have adjustment. Uh, and they have to be in the right place and they have to have adjustment. I've experimented with lots of options and if you choose to uh, purchase my components, this is as you're saying, uh, you'll be able to easily and quickly uh, put end frames together that will hold the four roll uh, machine quilt frame setup and we'll get into that more later uh, as I show you how the rolls are mounted to the frame and uh, and then uh, more about the rolls themselves but I want to just get you to think about something for a minute as we're as we're talking on this okay you've got your rolls that you mount your quilt layers on now how tight do those layers have to be tightened for machine quilting. How tight does that quilt need to be stretched? You know what? I'll probably differ than some manufacturers on this. I don't have a rat ratchet type tighteners on the ends of the rolls because I don't believe a quilt needs to be stretched drum tight. I'll get into later on showing you how the quilt is mounted to the rolls, how the rolls are held in place, and a few little tricks you can do uh, that will hold, you know, besides the tightening on the end frames, will hold the rolls in place even, even tighter.